bought this property about 10 years ago. Um, this barn was a, had been a loafing barn when this used to be a working dairy. Um, and when we bought it, the people that we bought it from had, had beef cattle, not dairy cattle. There'd be some, some farm equipment in here. There'd be, uh, you know, like stuff, furniture and stuff when they move from one house to another, just, just storage. And it was, it was pretty rough. Um, this was my dad's dream was to tear this, tear it down and build it back and have a bluegrass gospel music venue. And, uh, that's what he did. Um, we had to take out a lot of little stalls from where it, you really, what, it, I mean, it was still set up for, for dairy cows. There were stalls and straw and everything, little mangers for them to eat out of while they were loafing. Um, we'd tear all that out. Redo the concrete floor. Um, we left the the main structure itself is the same. Um, the metal side, the metal roof, the skylights—they're they're all the same. Dad has been involved in bluegrass and gospel music since the nineteen fifties and early late fifties and early sixties. Um, and he he used to know several people in Nashville. Um, and of course, Dad's health is failing now, and a lot of the people that he knew in Nashville have passed on. Um, but he still does have some people he knows, um, and he's used his contacts through that. Um, most of the people that he that he would still have contact with would be the older generation. Um, you know, very very few of the younger younger type play, people would he would he be able to get a hold to. Had Dalian Vincent been here, Rhonda Vincent's been, um, James King has been here, um, the young the young group called Gravel Road, they've been here several times. Uh, we are part of the Crooked Road. We've had Ricky Skaggs, uh, he's going to be here again just, just this week. Um, probably if he's not the biggest name we've had, it would have to be Ralph Stanley. Dr. Stanley before he passed away. And he's been here three or four times with, uh, with his grandson, Nathan. And one time they wrecked the bus right here in the parking lot. Um, but anyway, it, uh, somebody was helping a motion to back into the spot and they weren't watching one of the sides and knocked a huge glass out of the, of the bus, like uh, probably 10 or 12 feet wide and about five or six feet high and they had to get it replaced that night before they could get on the road and go somewhere else because they had to be somewhere else down in I think Carolina or maybe South Carolina the next day so they had to get it fixed they were out there working on the, on the wind of the bus while the concert was going on in here so that was not I mean, it's memorable but it's not enjoyable we try to have uh, somebody big in the spring before the wedding season and somebody in the fall after the wedding season. Um, and then we might fit in a few smaller, once the wedding schedule gets set, we might fit in a few smaller acts um, that we don't have to have much time to plan for. But um, this, this, uh, this fall, coming in November, we have Rhonda Vincent will be here. Um, and she's been here before and she puts on a really good show. Um, her and her group called The Rage is her backup band. And opening up for them, we have some young people, most of which are fairly local. They're out of the Galax and down in North Carolina. And they call themselves Shadowgrass. And they were on the Steve Harvey, the show that Steve Harvey hosts called Little Big Shots just two weeks ago on Sunday night. And so we're really excited to have them. Um, you could tell by watching them. They didn't tell us, tell us where they were from on TV, but we could tell by listening to them watching them that they were they were fairly close and fairly local by their accent. And my wife got to looking before the show ever ended and their booking agent lives in Galax. And so that was pretty cool. So we, we called them the next day they called back and we set it up. So we're excited to have them come and to open up for Miss Vincent that, and that'll be in November. That's one of the neat things about this place. Backstage is really not even backstage. We just open a door and it's here. Um, and I mean, they just come right, right behind where they sang and set it up, set it at one of these white tables, and and the whole group will sit here and 
There'll be a huge line of people. They'll bring guitars, banjos, mandolins for somebody to sign, sign the back of the ticket stub, and and you know, some of them, a lot of them wanted to talk to Ricky the last time, but some of them wanted to talk to some of the the other musicians in the band too. Uh, Kentucky Thunder is what his backup band's called, but uh, he he's very gracious. Um, I think the last time he was here, the show ended. 9:15, 9:30, and it was almost midnight before we got on the bus. After doing all the, all the autographs and handshaking and all that, and then and then my dad, he got with my dad, and they dad toured him around the barn to show him some of the memorabilia from back 50 years ago of dad doing some shows with Flatten Scruggs and some of the other. Um, Bill Monroe, some of the older uh, older people, the fathers of the, what we call the forefathers of bluegrass. I mean, some of them, some of them let people get up on the bus and look at their tour bus. I don't think Ricky Skaggs will do that this week, but we've had several people. Several people got on Doctor Stanley's bus and looked around with him, um, and they're just, I mean, they're just normal people. I mean, that you you really can't tell that they're famous. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm sure if you go to Run up Civic Center and see some of these big, big acts. They're gonna, you couldn't get this kind of access and the people are probably gonna act a little different. But out here, I mean, they're just, they're just normal people that are raised up in the country like us. And I mean, just, they can just, they got a God given gift, whether it's singing or picking or whatever. They just, you know, everybody's got a gift, but theirs is, theirs is music. And, but they're just normal people and they just, that, you know, they'll come in and sit down and eat with you and they, you know, meatloaf, barbecue, fried chicken mashed taters, green beans, whatever. I mean, they just like the rest of us. Something that has just really gotten huge in the last couple of years, people getting married in a non-traditional church venue um, where they want to do a, a barn wedding or outside or whatever. But, to, um, you know, and we stay fairly well booked up from May through October. We're, uh, I think coming up this year for 2017, we've got 18 different weekends booked for weddings. Uh, most of the dates we still have open are rather undesirable due to whether it be Memorial Day or Labor Day or July the 4th or something like that. So, to dates that pe typically people would be traveling or at the beach or something with their family are the dates that we have open. But And then we do other stuff as well. Um, we've done some high school reunions. We've done some birthday parties, done some anniversaries, you know, and we can, we can do some off-season events as well, um, especially if they're smaller in number. Um, cause we can, part of the barn is insulated, we can heat it up. You know, if we did an event for less than 100 people, we can definitely get it good and warm for the folks. For the weddings, we, we do offer another barn um, that a lot of the young ladies get married at, and then we'll come back to the barn we're in now for the reception. And we've got a, it's a tractor pulled wagon. It's an old hay wagon we've had refurbished. It's uh, got church pews on it and safety rails, and I'll take the, the guests back and forth from one barn to the other, and then I take the bride and the bridal party, show the, escort them out there with the tractor and the, and the wagon just before the ceremony. And they, they really like, the, the wagon's really a big, a big deal. I mean, this is, this is my dad's dream, is this, this, this place here. The, the, the barn itself is my dad's dream. And um, I feel like to honor him, I wanna keep doing this in, for his legacy. Even, even though he's still, his health has failed some, even though he's still able to, to come to the shows and join him, even you know if something if his health were to deteriorate more, I think I would still like to go on with this. But uh, you know, first and foremost, this this is still a working farm, and as long as I've got breath in my body, it will be a working farm. Um, the the both the singings and the weddings are are still a footnote. I mean, we, the, the cows and the hay and the produce that's still where where my heart's at. Um, but but we do enjoy the weddings and the and the, I really enjoy the weddings, meeting, meeting the young ladies as they plan and get their special day ready. And then the, the, the people that you meet through the, through the singings, they're just, I mean, you can't find a bad person out there seem like when you're dealing with bluegrass music and, and their fans. I mean, they're just super nice. Um, they're, they're good to come and, you know, wait outside till we can get the doors open you know, some of these artists contractually, we can't open the doors till a certain time, and the people will come and stand outside an hour, hour and a half to wait to come in to get a seat, and they 
they don't complain, they don't fuss. I mean, they just, they're, it's just, it's a good deal. So, and, uh, you know, if y'all hadn't been here, I hope, hope you come see us for a future singing. <laughs>